regulates and how they are placed. So uh, why this talk matters is that uh, diabetes is not just the numbers we know that. Uh, in the slide is not moving. So if we look at the numbers, we will find that uh, by the HbA1c, if you see only 50% of the population all over the world, they had an HbA1c of less than 7%. And if we look at the number of the blood pressure and the cholesterol, we know that we are not doing well. There are a lot of people who are not uh, well controlled. Also, only 22% of the patients, they meet all the three criteria of uh, all the three criteria of having a good and adequate control of blood pressure as well as the HbA1c as well as the cholesterol. So slides are not moving, so I am doing this again and again. So uh, only 22.2% uh, patients meet all the criteria. And uh, it is important to understand that what is the impact of diabetes on the premature death. If you look at the uh, female patient, 60 old, they lose almost 6.7 years because of the diabetes and the diabetes and MI and stroke, almost 15.7 years of the life is lost. And in males with diabetes and MI, almost 11.2 years of the life is lost, uh, lost because of the diabetes itself. If you look at the management of the hyperglycemia and the different algorithms which are there, you will find that uh, ADA 2021, ACE 2020 and ACE, recently the ADA as well as the ESD guidelines, they want to classify the criteria where we are going to use the medications. They say, they talk about what is the compelling need to minimize the hypoglycemia. If there is a compelling need to minimize weight gain or promote weight loss, or whenever there is a cost is a major issue. If you look at the A1C 2020 guidelines, or if you look at the ADA 2021 guidelines, you will find, or even the RS of the guidelines, you will find that after metformin, it is a GLP-1, which tops the chart and comes even before the SGLD2 inhibitors and the DTP4 inhibitors. And these criteria have been given independent of the glycemic control. So it doesn't matter how good or bad is the glycemic control. If somebody is having an established cardiovascular disease or is at high risk of CKD or having heart failure with reduced digestion infection. So it has been indicated that they should be started on GLP-1 RA algorithm or sometimes SGLT2 inhibitor can also be considered. Especially it has been mentioned that it should be the molecule which has shown to be of proven efficacy. So this is uh, to be done. If we talk about the 2021 ADA standards of care, and uh, it says that if a A1C is above individualized target, the proceed as below. And you will find in this uh, slide uh, that there is a compelling need to minimize hypoglycemia. And there you place DPP4 inhibitor, GLP-1, SGLT2, as well as thiazolidine diodes together. And here again, you can see that if A1C above target, then you can change the combination and different things which are there. But what matters is, uh, important is that if there is a compelling need to minimize weight gain or promote weight loss, it is the GLP-1 receptor agonist with good efficacy for the weight loss. And none of the SGLT2 inhibitor has shown that much weight loss or effi uh, uh, efficacy with the weight loss as that has been seen with the GLP-1 agonist. Now we are having the semaglutide also with us. And we know that semaglutide is uh, one of the molecule which is having biggest effect on the weight loss. Also, we are talking about the twin critics like uh, terzepatide, which, uh, which has been mar uh, launched in the Europe mar European market, maybe soon available to us. And terzepatide, as we know, is again a GLP-1 agonist uh, uh, and it uh, works on the same axis and it can be uh, uh, can reduce weight loss up to the tune of the 20%. So that is something which is shown only and only by the GLP-1 agonist and no, now the other class. Uh, whenever the cost is a major factor, definitely we have the options and choices of the sulfonylurea and thiazolidine diodes. They also exist and we can definitely use that. Again, it is important to understand that when we talk about the uh, organ dysfunction and what are the cause which contributes to the uh, hyperglycemia, you will find that there are multiple reasons for that. And uh, this is the ominous octate you will find. But it is the GLP-1 receptor agonist which addresses the multiple pathophysiological mechanisms which are there, for example, whether it is increased hepatic glucose production, incretin effect, or there is a decreased uh, beta cell dysfunction, or there is a islet, uh, increased glucagon secretion, neurotransmitter dysfunction. So these are the multiple pathophysiological pathways which are addressed by the GLP-1 receptor agonist and none of the other uh, molecules which are available for the management of diabetes. Also, there is the risk for the hypoglycemia is minimal. There is no risk of hypoglycemia. The weight loss with the GLP-1 receptor agonist can be exceptional and no class can match uh, that when it comes to the weight loss efficacy. 
Also, uh, this is very, very important to understand that the GLP-1 favorably impacts overall CV risk, whether it is cardio protection, whether it is reduced coagulation by the pleiotropic effect on the platelets, whether there is a postprandial lipid uh, decline in the postprandial lipid rise, there is decreased glucose, uh, reduced chances of the hypoglycemia, reduced inflammation, weight loss. There is uh, a, a positive impact on the blood pressure also, and there is a lateral resistance as well as the diuresis in the kidney. So GLP-1 receptor agonists, they reduce inflammation. They also help in, uh, because of the multiple ple uh, pleiotropic effect, they have an overall uh, uh, risk benefit ratio, which is in favor of reducing CV risk. If we talk about the various trials which are there, for example, these are the CVOT trials, and some of them are, have been done with the DP inhibitors and the others with the SGLT2 inhibitors. And you will find that the, one of the largest number of the trials have been with the GLP1 receptor agonists only. And uh, multiple molecules, and uh, now we have delaglutide with us, we are also using liraglutide. The semaglutide is now available in the form of oral form. Sooner we will have semaglutide injectable also. So these are the, the drug. Uh, these are the trials where you can e uh, easily see that the three point maze uh, definitely there is a superior result with the lisaglutide, dulaglutide, liraglutide as well as the semaglutide, which is there. While other talks about the known inferiority only and only canagliflozin and the ampagliflozin they stand out in terms of the uh, uh, three point maze uh, superiority. Also, if we look at the meta-analysis of the GLP-1 RAs, the CV mortality, no, no uh, fetal MI or the stroke, you will find that the it definitely favors GLP-1 RA in this forest plot, you can say, and the effect is uh, comparable and uh, it may be, uh, there may be differences in between the molecules, but overall as a class effect, there is a favorable impact on the CV mortality on fetal MI as well as the stroke. So if we talk about uh, uh, the fact that therefore many of our patients with type 2 diabetes, it is not just about the blood sugar. We need to see, we are talking about the holistic approach. We now want to see the patient as a whole. We just don't want to normalize the blood sugar alone. We want to take care of the blood pressure, kidneys, liver. We also want to take care of the cardiovascular benefits and uh, cardiovascular protection also. So here the GLP-1 class definitely have an edge over the yeah. other molecules. If we, talk about, if we talk about the management of the risk, so it is, uh, as I pointed out uh, earlier also, it is the it is considered independently of the baseline HbA1c. So the baseline HbA1c does not matter whenever we are talking about the risk stratification. And there is an individualized A1c target of the metformin use. So the consensus with the American College of Cardiology is that the GLP-1 RA as well as the SGLP inhibitors, they have proven CBD benefit to reduce the risk of MACE in adult patients with type 2 diabetes and the established uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease heart failure or CKD, independent of the glycemic control. So th this is the class of the patients where we need to consider these molecules. So uh, the benefit can be uh, uh, passed in. So uh, this is again the 2021 ADA standard of care with established ACS ACS VD or the heart failure or the CKD. And you will find that again, there is, uh, these are the indicators of the high risk of established uh, CVD, CKD, or other heart failure. And I will not go into detail, that, but the point to emphasize is that anybody who is having increased cardiovascular risk, they can benefit from the GLP-1 receptors agonist. So GLP-1 receptor agonist with proven CVD benefit. Again, you will see, in even in CKD patients, you will find that any GLP-1 receptor uh, with a proven CVD benefit can be used uh, in this class of the patient. It is important to understand that uh, whenever we are talking about the management of the diabetes, the goal of the care is that we want to empower the patient. We give, we want to give them the control of what they are doing. It is important to assess the key patient characteristic, including the risk for the cardiovascular disease, heart failure, as well as CKD. We also need to look at the clinical characteristic like age, HbA1c, as well as the weight, because Obesity must be uh, we must be able to address the obesity if we want to minimize the risk of uh, future cardiovascular events or premature death. We all know that uh, with uh, uh, with the larger BMIs or whenever the BMI is more, the risk of CV mortality as well as the longevity they reduce. So uh, we need to agree on a management plan which is common, and then uh, we need to take all the other steps which can help us in implementing this plan. So uh, I will be brief and I would like to uh, summarize my talk with the implications that 
optimal diabetes management is key for reducing both microvascular as well as the cardiovascular risk for patients with diabetes. GLP-1 receptor agonists, they improve glucose levels while not only they increase, uh, while with, uh, without increasing the risk of hypoglycemia or weight gain. Compared to any other class of drugs which are currently available, GLP-1 RAs have the greatest impact on the pathophysiology on the, of the hyperglycemia. Also, if we look at the evidence itself, then the only the GLP-1 RAs class do not pose an increased risk of GLP-1 class uh, do not pose any uh, increased risk of major adverse cardiovascular events. And various C CVOTs, they have shown that several, uh, the GLP-1 uh, agonist can actually uh, reduce the risk of the base as well as the, and whether it is deulaglutide, lirarlutide, semaglutide. So uh, the uh, trials are there and they provide support and teaching to empower your patients to succeed with the important therapy. So one of the uh, the GLP-1 therapy can only be successful because uh, when if we are able to guide the patient properly, we are able to counsel the patient properly and we empower them. So I would like to conclude by saying that uh, it is important that it, it is not just about the sugar, we need to keep other factors in mind. So this is where the GLP-1 uh, RAs, they stand apart. So uh, please, uh, we need to look at the patient holistically and wherever it is required, this class simply cannot be written off because it is expensive. So one has to take care of that fact also. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think I have finished in time and before time.